Welcome dear friend. I have titled this presentation. The Lordship Salvation Cult at Pensacola Christian College. I live in the city of Pensacola, Florida. In my mailbox in November of 2023 I found a stamped envelope from Campus Church at Pensacola Christian College with my address and the words on it which read. To our neighbor. I then opened the envelope and inside I found a disturbing booklet titled John and Romans. The booklet has 64 pages in it. The campus church logo is printed on the front cover. I will often refer to Pensacola Christian College throughout this presentation with the abbreviation PCC. I was shocked on page 60 when I read PCC's counterfeit plan of salvation. Evidently campus church is mailing out the counterfeit plan of salvation to the 54,000 people who live in Pensacola. What I am about to read to you is straight from the devil dear friend. Quote. Now is the time to turn from your sin and embrace God. The act of turning away from sin is called repentance. This word implies an inward decision to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. It means changing your mind about sin and seeing it as something that grieves God. The Bible says that God patiently waits for all people to make this decision. End quote. Kindly said. Since 2014 I have been exposing the cult at Bob Jones University and now I have been exposing the cult at Pensacola Christian College, PCC, since 2021. By God's grace, I will continue to expose these wicked organizations who preach another gospel. The dangerous cult at PCC are aggressively spreading their damnable heresy throughout Pensacola by mailing spiritual poison to people's mailboxes. With neighbors like Campus Church at PCC, who needs an enemy like the devil? PCC has much blood on their hands. Dear friend, nowhere in the inspired King James Bible does it teach that you must repent of your sin, or to turn from your sin to get to heaven. Yet PCC and their campus church have arrogantly changed God's simple plan of salvation, perverting the simple Bible meaning of repentance. PCC instead falsely teaches that repentance means to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. Oh my! That is the devil's lie of Lordship salvation. Shame on Campus Church and PCC. If the Bible be true, and it is true, then my accurate Bible preaching against PCC's apostasy will be vindicated. Campus Church mailed poison to my home, putting it right into my own mailbox, revealing their underbelly so that by God's grace I can further expose the dangerous religious cult system at PCC. I wrote this article to help teach people what true Bible repentance is and to expose the false prophets at PCC in Pensacola. Dear listener, you cannot be born again if you place your trust in a counterfeit gospel. Sadly, what PCC and their campus church are preaching is another gospel, not the free grace of God which is without works. As I read further in PCC's rotten plan of salvation, just like the pseudo-Christian cults, such as Mormons, Roman Catholics, Seventh-day Adventists, Church of Christ, etc. They speak out of both sides of their mouth, claiming that salvation is free and by grace, yet at the same time requiring you to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. Where does the inspired King James Bible say that? It doesn't. To make matters even worse. On page 62 of the John and Romans booklet mailed to my home, PCC's campus church tells the reader that to be saved you must make a mental check to quote, repent of my sins. I realize that sin is something that God hates and I no longer want to hold on to sinful bad habits in my life. End quote. Oh my. Folks. This is not part of the gospel which the apostle Paul preached in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. Quote. Moreover. Brethren. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. End quote. There you have it. The Gospel. 
It is the good news that Jesus Christ died on a cross for our sins. He was buried. And after three days he physically resurrected from the dead. Paul said he received his gospel directly from Jesus in Galatians chapter 1 verse 12. Did you see anything that reads follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins? No, that is not what Paul taught. So why are PCC and their campus church promoting this lying filth? The only requirement to believe the gospel is to know why you need to be saved. You need to know what you're being saved from. You are a guilty sinner and so am I. No one has ever lived who didn't sin. Except Jesus. He is the perfect and sinless Lamb of God. The Bible teaches and warns that the wages we earn from our sinning is death. This includes a second death in hell fire and brimstone forever. If you admit by faith to God that you are a guilty sinner deserving of hell, then that is all you need to know to believe the good news that Jesus Christ died on a cross to pay for your sins. He was buried. And three days later he physically rose up from the dead for your justification. Believe the good news O oh guilty sinner and you'll be instantly and forever saved. I have read to you the worthless trash that PCC is spreading today. Sending people to hell with their heresy. What they are teaching at Campus Church is Tommy Rot, Balderdash and Poppycock. What Pensacola Christian College is teaching cannot produce the new birth in Christ. Because this is not the gospel. Pensacola Christian College are damning the people of Pensacola to the lake of fire by preaching the same damnable wrong understanding of repentance as the Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Roman Catholics and Churches of Christ. Bible repentance to be saved does not mean to turn from your sins, it means a change of mind from unbelief to believing the gospel. As an example of what I am saying about PCC teaching the same damnable heresy as the cults, consider the following quote from the Mormons. This heretical quote is from the Mormon website at churchofjesuschrist.org. Quote. Repentance is one of the first principles of the gospel and is essential to our temporal and eternal happiness. It is much more than just acknowledging wrongdoings. It is a change of mind and heart that gives us a fresh view about God, about ourselves, and about the world. It includes turning away from sin and turning to God for forgiveness. It is motivated by love for God and the sincere desire to obey His commandments. End quote. Do you see friend how Pensacola Christian College are teaching the same garbage as the Mormons? If you go online to learn what the Roman Catholics, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses and other pseudo-Christian cults believe and teach, you will be horrified to find that they are all in agreement with Pensacola Christian College. I hope you're not foolish enough to send your child to be brainwashed at PCC. Here is another shocking example. This time a quote from the Cult of Christian Science. On their website at sentinel.christianscience.com. It reads and I quote. The admonition of the scripture is that the truly penitent bring forth fruits to prove their sincerity and honesty. If the lips confess guilt and express sorrow therefore, while the heart still clings to the sin, the fruits of righteousness will not be in evidence. The turning from sin means nothing short of reformation in thought as well as in course of conduct. End quote. Their official teaching at PCC's Campus Church aligns perfectly with the Christian Science Cult. Their official position at Campus Church, in their Foundations class is that. Quote. Repentance is a change of mind resulting in a change of behavior. End quote. That is Lordship Salvation. PCC errantly requires that your behavior change as proof you've been born again. Nowhere does the inspired word of God teach that repentance unto salvation will result in behavior modification. PCC are guilty of mixing works with grace. They are tragically caught between grace and works. Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 says that salvation is of the Lord. Either God does the saving, all of it, or else you don't get grace. It's as simple as that. Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins and mine. He does not require that you first decide to reform your life. Do a better job of not sinning. And begin to follow Christ as a condition of receiving God's free gift of eternal life. I am so sick and tired of ungodly preachers embellishing God's simple plan of salvation. As Pastor John Ritchie says, they've been smoking tulip. That is, they are all wicked Calvinists who preach a counterfeit plan of salvation that requires partial faith in Christ plus giving up your sinful bad habits. 
Yet those liars will all insist that salvation is still by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. Well, if it is by grace and faith alone, then why do we have to forsake our sinful bad habits to obtain eternal life? I hope dear friend as I do that you see something very wrong with this picture. What PCC is preaching today is not a free grace gospel. It is Calvinism. It is a deadly lie of the devil. It is another gospel which cannot produce the new birth by the Holy Spirit of God. Faith is the only righteous thing that I can do. They love their money so much at PCC and Campus Church that they couldn't care less about the truth I am sharing with you. I hope you care. God cares I can assure you of that. Right doctrine matters. I said right doctrine matters. It really does. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2, the Apostle Paul tells young Timothy, quote, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. End quote. Please don't miss those two words. The same. Paul told Timothy to commit the same doctrines of the Christian faith to faithful men, as were also handed to him, so they could hand those sound doctrines down to the next generation. Well, that is what I am faithfully doing. I am handing down a free grace gospel to the next generation. Tragically, cults like PCC and Bob Jones University are perverting the gospel. They are going along with ungodly neo-evangelical parasites in the churches and Bible colleges today who are corrupting the faith instead of earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. PCC has blood on their hands for perverting the gospel of free grace. Nowhere does the inspired King James Bible tell us to turn from your sins to be saved, or to repent of your sins to get to heaven. Unsaved wicked preachers added those extra requirements to God's simple plan of salvation. They have attacked the gospel of grace. And in so doing they have attacked God who is the author of grace. Wow be unto Pensacola Christian College and their wicked infidel pastors. The Bible warns in Galatians chapter 6 in verse 7 that whatsoever a man sows he shall also reap. PCC will reap the fiery judgment of God in eternity for perverting his words and changing the gospel. Again, you don't have to turn away from your sinning to be saved. Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins. Whatever changes that God wants to see happen in your life after you get saved is an entirely different matter of service and discipleship, and not of salvation and justification, which is by faith alone. To avoid corrupting the gospel and confusing people we must always maintain a distinct separation between salvation and service. This is so critically important. I often hear false prophets like Billy Graham and John MacArthur citing scripture passages about discipleship from the book of Matthew, applying them to salvation. They are woefully ignorant and misled by the devil. God specifically authored the book of John to teach us how to get to heaven. The Apostle John mentions the word believe 85 times in the Gospel of John, but he never mentions the word repent. Not once. That is simply because repentance and faith happen together and are inseparable. The man who believes has repented. That is, he has changed his mind from unbelief to belief. Repentance cannot mean anything more if eternal life is to remain a free gift as Romans chapter 5 verse 18 tells us. A gift can only be taken without any stipulations or obligations. So why do the wicked pastors at PCC require lost sinners to turn from their sinful bad habits and submit to obey God's will instead of their own self-serving sins to be saved? That is not the gospel. Not even close. PCC have been corrupted by the hellbound cult at Bob Jones University, who are consumed with the devil's fallacy of lordship salvation. What one generation tolerates the next generation will embrace. On Roman numeral page 12 in the introduction to his helpful book titled I Never Knew You, The Horror of the Great White Throne Judgment and How You Can Avoid It, Michael Patrick Bowen writes these helpful words. Quote, here is the gospel. God says that we are sinners and that no amount of good works or behavioral changes on our part could ever make us holy enough to enter heaven. God sent his son to pay for all of our sins. Jesus paid for our crimes by dying on the cross for us all. His dead body was buried in a grave. On the third day Jesus arose from the dead. The instant you believe this he knows it and he saves you. Verily verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. John chapter 6 verse 47. 
The free gift is based solely upon your trust in what Jesus did for you and has nothing at all to do with what you do for him. For by grace are ye saved through faith and the not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. End quote. Salvation is not a reward for the righteous. It is a gift for the guilty. Salvation is not doing your best. It is having Christ's best put to your account through receiving him by faith. Turning away from sinful ways would be a work. Faith puts all of the merit where it belongs. On the object of our faith. Jesus and his work. If to repent means to forsake our sinful ways to be saved. But Jesus already paid for our sins by dying on the cross. Then what are we repenting from? The true gospel always points you to Christ. A false gospel always points to you. We must stay true to the simplicity of the gospel. Repentance regarding salvation is a change of mind from unbelief to belief. We must earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. The only part that sin plays in the new birth is to admit to God that you are a guilty sinner. That is. You need to know what you are being saved from. The consequence of sinning. Which is death. This includes a second death in hell. Fire and brimstone. Without any rest day or night forever without hope. The good news is that if you are hearing this presentation. It is still not too late for you dear friend. It's already done. All we have to do is believe it. Simply believe the gospel. Period. My favorite preacher's quote is by Pilgrim's Progress author. John Bunyan. Who lived during the 17th century AD. If you do not put a difference between justification wrought by the man Christ without. And sanctification wrought by the spirit of Christ within. You are not able to divide the word aright, but contrarywise you corrupt the word of God and cast stumbling blocks before the people. End quote. God intentionally made his plan of redemption simple easy and free for mankind. God did this because there are a lot of uneducated educably slow and base people in the world. God's plan of salvation is so simple that even a small child can be saved simply by understanding that he or she has sinned and Jesus paid for those sins by sacrificing himself on the cross. Jesus didn't remain dead. He resurrected three days later. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14. Quote, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. End quote. By the will of God I have declared war on every rotten church today. Particularly Baptist churches who have perverted God's simple plan of salvation. There is nothing in the inspired King James Bible which teaches to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins to get to heaven. This is the damnable lies being taught today at PCC and their campus church. Nor will you find anything in the Bible about repenting of your sins and giving up your sinful bad habits to be saved. To do so is works and not grace. Romans chapter 4 verses 4 and 5 read. Quote, now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. End quote. The true way of salvation is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to follow and obey God's will instead of your own self-serving sin. Campus Church is requiring lost sinners to keep the law to be saved. The Bible warns in Romans chapter 3 verse 20 that no flesh will be justified by keeping the Old Testament commandments of Moses. Jesus warned in John chapter 3 verse 3. Ye must be born again. Shame on PCC and the corrupt campus church. God knows that I love the folks at Pensacola Christian College and their campus church. I am not their enemy. They are God's enemies. PCC are the ones who have perverted the gospel. Not me. Not one word in the inspired King James Bible teaches to begin to follow Christ and to turn from your wicked way to get to heaven. By the way, that is exactly what infidel Ken Ham preaches on his answers in Genesis website. Tragically PCC honors and wickedly bids Godspeed to Ken Ham. Which the Bible warns makes them partaker of his evil deeds. In 2022 PCC invited Ken Ham to speak to their thousands of impressionable students. Sadly those students are being corrupted by PCC's toxic false theology. God is not a respecter of persons. God is on my side for one reason. Because I am telling the truth and PCC are theological liars. 
on his answers in Genesis ministry website. False prophet Ken Ham errantly teaches that to get to heaven you must do three things. First, he says trust in Jesus. Second, he says to repent by turning from your wicked way. And third, he says you must begin to follow Christ. I triple dog dare you to show me anywhere in the inspired Holy Bible where it says to turn from your wicked way or begin to follow Christ to be saved. What saith the scripture? We read in Acts chapter 16 verses 29 through 31. Quote, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought him out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. End quote. Did you get that? Paul and Silas told him that to be saved he just needed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There was no mention of turning from his wicked way, nor to begin to follow Christ. They didn't tell the Philippian jailer in Rome to get water baptized or join a religion nor to faithfully attend a church. They only told him to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But don't we have to repent to be saved? Yes, absolutely. But repentance is simply a change of mind unto the gospel itself. Anybody who says that repentance is a separate act from faith is preaching another gospel. In the Gospel of John we find the word believe mentioned 85 times. But the word repent is not mentioned even one time. That is because repentance is automatic. The man who believes has repented. And the man who repents has believed. Dr. John R. Rice used to wisely say that repentance and faith are not two steps to be saved, but rather they are two parts of one step. I heard a helpful illustration many years ago about repentance and faith. Using an airplane. Let's say for our illustration that you want to take a trip to Honolulu, Hawaii from Nashville, Tennessee. You don't get on a plane traveling toward Honolulu. But then you also need to leave Nashville. No. As you are headed for your destination you are simultaneously leaving your origin. Likewise. When you put your trust in Jesus Christ. You are turning away from your unbelief. You are turning by faith to the grace and liberty that is in Christ. From the condemnation and penalty which sin brings which is hell. The only change of heart towards sin that you experience at the time of the new birth is to admit that you are a guilty sinner. Either Christ is the saving, all of it, or else you don't get grace. To foolishly tell a lost sinner that he or she must forsake a lifestyle of sinning. And to begin to follow Christ as a mandate to receive God's free gift of eternal life. Is to place a heavy burden of man-made reformation upon that sinner's shoulders which is an impossible burden for any sinner to bear. Christ alone bore the full weight of our sins on the cross of Calvary, a burden that no sinful human being could ever bear. We read in Acts chapter 3 verse 26, quote, Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. End quote. Carefully notice that Jesus does the turning, not you or me. We cannot turn from our sins. No one can. Galatians chapter 2 verses 20 and 21 read. Quote. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me. And gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. End quote. Again, carefully notice that it is Christ and not we ourselves who lives the Christian life through us as God's children. The true plan of salvation is that you simply come to God as an ungodly sinner. And you put your trust in Jesus Christ because of what he did through Calvary's cross to pay your debt of sin. Simply receive Christ's sacrifice on the cross as full payment for your sins. Starting text. Believe that he was buried, but then three days later he physically resurrected miraculously from the dead. This is the gospel. That is. The good news that Jesus died on a cross. Was buried and resurrected the third day from the dead. Believe this good news friend and God promises to save you immediately and forever. Going to heaven is that easy free and simple. There is nothing else you must do. I heard Steve Pettit. The former incompetent president of Bob Jones University from 2014 to 2023. Say in a chapel sermon from January 26, 2015 that was titled What Does It Mean to Run the Race? Quote. 
You can't just speak about getting saved and you accepted Christ and then that is it. There is a justification. There is a sanctification. There's ultimately a glorification. And though there are three parts, they are all part of the whole and you cannot separate them. In order for you to qualify for the award you have to get into the race. You have to stay in the race. And you have to finish the race. If you want to win you have to run to the end. And winning in the Christian life is everything because if you lose. If you don't finish. You lose everything. You lose your soul. And so. The Christian race is the life of faith that begins. Is run. And is finished when we cross over into heaven. End quote. Steve Pettit is very wrong. He is preaching the devil's lie of Calvinism. He is not saved. Pettit is teaching the well-known Calvinist heresy known as the perseverance of the saints. I believe in the preservation of the saints. Not the perseverance of the saints. I humbly agree with Pastor Harry Ironside. Who said that it is the indwelling Holy Spirit who perseveres in a believer. And not the believer himself. Calvinism is a lie of the devil. Kindly said. Steve Pettit is very wrong to say that you cannot just speak about getting saved and you accepted Christ and then that is it. Yes. You surely can speak about getting saved and accepting Christ and that's it. Remember. Eternal life is the free gift of God according to Romans chapter 6 verse 23, and also Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. For by grace are we saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. What part of God's simple plan of salvation don't PCC's leaders and pastors understand? I think Michael Patrick Bowen said it best in his helpful book titled I Never Knew You. Quote, I am at eternal odds with the false counterfeit messages of salvation by works that are taught from virtually every pulpit today. On every television channel. And on every Christian radio station, however, I am not at eternal odds with the individuals who preach these counterfeit messages. My heart literally goes out to all of them because they simply do not understand Christ's plan of salvation. They have been lied to by a crafty enemy named Satan, whose sole aim is to take as many people with him to the lake of fire as he can possibly manage to steal away from God using a counterfeit plan of salvation that appears so real, so genuine, and so holy that few ever realize they have been deceived by it. Oh listener. So many of today's professing Christians who think they are going to heaven when they die are not going to make it to heaven as they had assumed because they've been lied to by today's error-filled gospel messages. End quote. Search the scripture dear friend. Please don't become another victim of Pensacola Christian College's damnable heresy. If you foolishly think, as PCC and Campus Church do, that you must forsake your sinful bad habits to seal the deal to get to heaven. Then you are guaranteed to go straight to hell when you breathe your last breath. If you want to go to heaven someday, then you had better cease from your own dead works and by faith rest completely in Christ's sacrifice on the cross as full payment for your sins, believing that he was buried, but then three days later physically resurrected from the dead. That is the gospel. That is the good news by which all who believe it are instantly irrevocably and permanently saved. What a wonderful God and Saviour! Nothing is a free gift if you are obligated to give up your sinful bad habits to obtain it. Nothing is a free gift if you are obligated to submit to obey God's will instead of your own self-serving sins. The truth is that you come to God as a helpless miserable guilty ungodly sinner and simply trust Christ by believing that he did it all for you through Calvary's cross. I am so sick and tired of corrupt preachers perverting the grace of God. You cannot be saved by partial faith in Christ plus something more. If you cannot be saved without first being willing to give up your sinful ways, then everyone is going to hell. No one has ever turned away from their sin. No one. You may clean up your act. You may reform as did Judas. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 27 verse 3 that Judas repented himself. Judas experienced penitence. Feeling sorrow for betraying innocent blood. Judas experienced penance. Trying to make amend by returning the thirty pieces of silver, he was paid to betray Jesus into the Pharisees' wicked hands. Judas was a reformed man. Yet Judas never changed his mind to admit that he is a guilty sinner in the sight of a holy God. Nor did Judas change his mind to admit that Jesus is the Christ. Judas did not experience true Bible repentance to be saved. To be saved you must repent. That is. You must change your mind about two things. 
The first thing is who you are. You must change your mind to admit that you are a sinner. The second thing is who Jesus is. You must change your mind to admit that Jesus is the Christ. The only begotten Son of God. It is that simple friend. We are sinners and Jesus is the Savior. Whatever changes God wants to see happen in your life after you've come to Christ is solely his department dear friend. And you can be assured that he will attend to that. God is not an absent parent. The only thing you get at the time of the new birth is God's gift of the indwelling Holy Spirit. Your behavior doesn't change. Nor does God require that your behavior change to be saved nor even to prove that you are saved. If you have to look at your behavior to prove that you're saved it just proves that you're not. The unsaved people in Matthew chapter 7 verses 22 and 23 boasted to Jesus of their many wonderful works which they had done. They had been reformed. They were living a changed life. Yet Jesus denied knowing him as his sheep and they were cast into hell forever. They failed to trust Christ alone. So just because a religious person's life has changed for the better is no indication of whether they're saved or lost. The only sure way to determine if someone is saved or not is by the direct testimony from their mouth concerning Jesus Christ. Remember, Jonah chapter 2 verse 9 says that salvation is of the Lord. Our only role in God's plan of salvation is the beggar's part. Also consider Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, whom the Bible says fasted prayed gave alms to the poor and feared God. He was a good and upright man who feared God. Yet he was not saved. Cornelius didn't get saved until verse 44. So just because someone's life has changed for the better doesn't mean they're going to heaven. You must be born again. Most people have churchianity without Christianity. And they're still lost in their unbelief and false religion. In one of my favorite Bible study helps. Pastor Brad Strand writes in his excellent work. The Strand Study Bible. On page 2070. Quote. Whereas religion says look what I've done for Jesus. I've been good. Baptized. Faithful to church. Etc. That is. Religious works. But Christianity says look what Jesus did for me. I was headed to hell and he offered me salvation and I accepted it. That is. Grace. End quote. I love the quote. Brother Strand is an excellent Bible teacher. He was one of my favorite teachers when I studied at Hiles Anderson College 35 years ago. By God's grace I graduated in 1993. I thank God for investing in a redeemed nobody like me. God is so very good. I thank God for Pastor Jack Hiles who preached a free grace gospel. The devil has crept his fallacies of lordship salvation and misunderstood repentance into nearly every Bible seminary church and pulpit today. More people will die and burn in hell because they're trusting too much. Everything that's hard and complicated about salvation is God's side of it. Oh how I desire for preachers to get back to the simple gospel of free grace. To attack the gospel of free grace is to attack the God of grace. I know that the pastors of Campus Church at Pensacola Christian College are in denial. They think they're sound in the faith. But as I have shown you they are not. Listen again to what we read on page 60 of the John and Romans booklet distributed by Campus Church at PCC. Quote. Now is the time to turn from your sin and embrace God. The act of turning away from sin is called repentance. This word implies an inward decision to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. It means changing your mind about sin and seeing it as something that grieves God. The Bible says that God patiently waits for all people to make this decision. End quote. That is absolutely not what it means to repent. PCC are preaching another gospel of partial faith in Christ plus works. They are foolishly saying that God will only do his part to save you if you first do your part of committing to give up your sinful bad habits. How is that a gift? This is tragic what has happened to PCC. They have been corrupted by the neo-evangelical cult at Bob Jones University. I quoted to you earlier what Steve Pettit falsely teaches. In their statement of faith at Bob Jones University it reads, quote, We believe scripture teaches that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ and apart from any human work of righteousness. God offers this salvation freely to all men who are willing to repent and turn from their sins and place their full faith and trust in the atonement Christ made by his finished work on the cross. End quote. 
The best place to hide a lie is between two truths. The greatest deception is the half-truth. Because the part that is true can be defended with incontestable logic. In Bob Jones University's statement of faith, they are correct that salvation is by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone apart from human works of righteousness. But then they totally and horribly contradict themselves. As all false prophets do by saying that you must be willing to repent and turn from your sins. You cannot show me that in the inspired word of God. Wicked infidels added those extra requirements to the Bible. They are claiming that God won't save anyone unless they are first willing to clean up their life of sin. That is not how getting saved works. God's way is that you come as you are. Without sacrificing anything. And you wholly lean on Jesus' name apart from all human works or giving up anything. God saves you by faith alone and then he seals and indwells you with his Holy Spirit. John chapter 16 verse 13 calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Truth. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Christ. Once saved the indwelling Spirit of Christ begins to work to change that new babe in Christ. Teaching us the truth. But if a new convert doesn't attend a local Bible believing church and doesn't desire the sincere milk of the word. And no saint mentors the babe in Christ. That child of God won't grow. There are millions of carnal and immature Christians throughout the world who are idle not serving God. Simply because local churches have failed to obey the Great Commission to teach him to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Incompetent preachers need to stop sinfully tampering with the gospel in a futile attempt to force people to live holy lives, and instead start preaching a free grace gospel and then mentor new converts with the word of God. In his helpful book called Salvation is More Than Being Saved. Chapter 3. Pastor Jack Hiles makes these tremendous statements. Quote. It is God who places in us the new nature and regenes or regenerates us. Just as the good Samaritan took the wounded man to the inn and commissioned the host to care for him. Even so upon regeneration the newborn Christian is to place himself in a New Testament church. So that church and the Christians therein can be used by the Holy Spirit for the converting of a life that was used for self. To be used for others that was lived in sin to be lived in righteousness. And that was producing works of the flesh to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Conversion then is the work of the church and its members as they are led by the Holy Spirit to change the life and work of one who has been regenerated. Redemption is a work of God the Son. Regeneration is the work of God the Holy Spirit. Justification is the work of God, the Father as he declares the sinner righteous in the Son. Conversion then becomes the work of the church as we change the use and purpose of a life. End quote. That is great truth. Your behavior may never change. PCC and their knucklehead incompetent pastors at Campus Church evidently don't understand the meaning of a gift. A gift is something freely given without any stipulations or obligations. If God requires anything from you in return for the new birth, other than to take it by faith, then it cannot truly be a gift. It would be a reward or a trade of sorts which is the satanic heresy which John MacArthur preaches. But don't take my word for it. Listen yourself to what John MacArthur says. In his popular 1988 book titled The Gospel According to Jesus. Pastor John MacArthur even heretically uses the word exchange concerning how to be saved. On page 140 John MacArthur foolishly states. Quote. Thus in a sense we pay the ultimate price for salvation when our sinful self is nailed to a cross. It is an exchange of all that we are for all that Christ is and it denotes implicit obedience, full surrender to the Lordship of Christ. Nothing less can qualify as saving faith. End quote. Dear listener, salvation is not an exchange. Receiving the free gift of eternal life is not a trade. John MacArthur is preaching another gospel of partial faith in Christ plus works. Salvation is not doing your best. It is having Christ's best put to your account through receiving him by faith. God will not save anyone who is trying to be saved. He will only save those who are trusting to be saved. Salvation is received, not achieved. Religion is man trying to reach God through human effort. But Christianity is God trying to reach man by the sacrifice of his only begotten son on the cross. Please beware of anyone who teaches that God requires something from you in return or as a condition of receiving his gift. PCC and their campus church require that you be willing to turn away from your sinful bad habits to be saved. Which is works. 
In Jonah chapter 3 verse 10, the Bible says that God saw their works that the people turned from their evil way. This verse also says that God repented. But we know that God is incapable of sinning. So how then can God repent? Obviously, God simply changed his mind not to destroy the Assyrian people. Because they turned from their evil way. They did not get saved. Here again is the false gospel taught by PCC's Campus Church on page 60 of their John and Romans booklet. Quote. Now is the time to turn from your sin and embrace God. The act of turning away from sin is called repentance. This word implies an inward decision to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. It means changing your mind about sin and seeing it as something that grieves God. The Bible says that God patiently waits for all people to make this decision. End quote. PCC are creating doubts in sinners' minds. Not dissolving them. Christ came into the world to die on a cross to pay our debt of sin. He does not demand that you first promise to clean up your life. Try to do better. Resolve in your heart to sin less. Nor anything else. Faith is the only righteous thing that I can do. Another one of my favorite preacher excerpts is from Pastor Harry Ironside, who said in his gospel tract titled What is the Gospel? Quote, the gospel is not a call to repentance, or to amendment of our ways, to make restitution for past sins, or to promise to do better in the future. These things are proper in their place, but they do not constitute the gospel, for the gospel is not good advice to be obeyed. It is good news to be believed. Do not make the mistake then of thinking that the gospel is a call to duty or a call to reformation. A call to better your condition. To behave yourself in a more perfect way than you have been doing in the past. Nor is the gospel a demand that you give up the world. That you give up your sins. That you break off bad habits. And try to cultivate good ones. You may do all these things and yet never believe the gospel and consequently never be saved at all. End quote. I am still surprised that Campus Church mailed that poisonous booklet out to the residents of Pensacola. PCC has much blood on their hands. That place is a cesspool of iniquity. Sending people to hell and wickedly teaching tomorrow's pastors to preach a corrupt plan of salvation that does not save. What a crying shame. I read a Bible verse in Daniel this morning and realized that PCC and Campus Church are creating doubts not dissolving them. Daniel chapter 5 verse 16 reads, quote, And I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. End quote. King Belshazzar said that he had heard that the prophet Daniel could dissolve doubts with his dream interpretations. Dear listener, this is what every Christian soul winner is supposed to do with the gospel. Dissolve doubts in people's minds. But we can only do this if we have a correct understanding of the truth of the gospel in the first place. You cannot preach the truth if you do not have the truth. Any pastor who supports this corrupt institution at PCC is partaking in their evil deeds. I am ashamed that the sword of the Lord continues to promote PCC for filthy lucre. The sword of the Lord wickedly promotes PCC in their monthly publication. In so doing they have blood on their hands. Partakers of PCC's counterfeit gospel. Campus Church and PCC cannot dissolve doubts by confusing people to think that getting saved is a trade or exchange of sorts. Sadly they are only creating doubts with their misunderstood repentance. Not one verse in the King James Bible says to repent of your sins to be saved. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 says to repent of your dead works. That is we must change our mind from the dead works we've been foolishly trusting in, to instead by faith rely upon the finished work of Jesus Christ through Calvary's cross to get us to heaven. That is the only way to be saved. Which does not require for you to give up your sinful bad habits. Remember, eternal life is a free gift according to Romans chapter 5 verse 18. By God's grace I will continue to expose these devils. PCC and the pathetic campus church create doubts. They don't dissolve them. They confuse lost sinners about what is necessary to get to heaven. Placing the burden of sin upon the sinner's shoulders instead of upon Christ, who bore the total weight of our sins on the cross. If you are okay with PCC's false plan of salvation, 
Then you are cursed by God for supporting a counterfeit gospel, and you need to get saved. No one has ever been born again who turned from their sinful behavior to be saved. Because that is works. Read for yourself what works Jesus said you must do to be saved. John chapter 6 verses 28 and 29 read. Quote, then said they unto him, What shall we do, that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. End quote. You won't be saved until you trust in Jesus Christ alone. Carefully notice that Jesus didn't say to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. No. PCC says that lie. Jesus said the work of God is to believe on him. The Greek noun for repent is metanoia, which simply means a change of mind. The Greek verb form of the word is metanoio, which means to think differently. These words do not mean to follow and obey God's will instead of your self-serving sins. These Greek words for repent do not mean I repent of my sins. Repentance does not mean I realize that sin is something that God hates and I no longer want to hold on to my sinful bad habits. PCC teaches this horrible lie. I applaud Pastor Harry Ironside for getting repentance correct, who writes in his helpful book titled Accept Ye Repent on page 16. Quote, which comes first? Repentance or faith? In scripture we read repent ye and believe the gospel. Yet we find true believers exhorted to repent and do the first works. So intimately are the two related that you cannot have one without the other. The man who believes God repents. The repentant soul puts his trust in the Lord when the gospel is revealed to him. Theologians may wrangle over this, but the fact is no man repents until the Holy Spirit produces repentance in his soul through the truth. No man believes the gospel and rests in it for his own salvation until he has judged himself as a needy sinner before God. And this is repentance. End quote. The only thing that we need to repent from to be saved is unbelief. Repentance is admitting to God that you are a guilty sinner, not turning away from your sinful behavior. Here is another awesome quote from Pastor Harry Ironside. Quote, repentance is the recognition of my sinnership, the owning before God that I am as vile as he has declared me to be in his holy word. End quote. Pastor Jack Hiles biblically states concerning repentance in his sermon title. The goodness of God leadeth to repentance. Quote. Repentance is not some little silly I am sorry. Repentance is not simply a fear of God. Repentance is not a monk fasting and afflicting his body in a monastery. Repentance is not remorse because of sin's consequences. Repentance is not penance performed before the Pope as you kiss his toe. Repentance is not being sorry for what I have done wrong. It is not confessing one's sins to a priest. It is not just conviction of sin. It is not the signing of a pledge of abstinence. Repentance is that thing when you come before God and see yourself as you are. And see him as he is. And say with Isaiah. Woe is me for I am unclean. End quote. Do we need to realize our sinful condition to be saved? Yes. Of course. But there is not one verse in the entire Holy Bible which requires a person to forsake sinful ways to be saved. Nor to be willing to give up your sinful lifestyle to be saved. Such embellishments to God's simple plan of salvation is works and not grace. I love this quote from one of my favorite free grace preachers, Pastor Ralph Yankee Arnold, who says in his sermon titled Why Grace Can Save the Worst Man, quote, There is power in this gospel message. Most people just don't know how to present it. The clarity of the gospel is what makes it easy for them to believe. End quote. Tragically PCC and Campus Church are confusing tens of thousands of people throughout Pensacola by mailing poisonous booklets that preach another gospel. Nothing is clear about the toxic plan of damnation. Pastor Curtis Hudson is so right. Who said repentance is like buttoning a dress shirt. If you get the first button wrong then all the other buttons will be wrong too. If a man is wrong on repentance, then he is also going to be wrong on everything else. We simply cannot trust PCC and Campus Church with doctrine because they are wrong on repentance, and therefore wrong on the gospel. I am shocked that the ungodly leaders of PCC are distributing this damnable heresy throughout Pensacola. PCC have complicated God's simple plan of salvation, changing it by adding being willing to forsake sinful behavior, so that no one can be saved from it.
PCC errantly defines repentance as a change of mind resulting in a change of behavior. That is a counterfeit gospel. Your behavior has absolutely nothing to do with receiving God's free gift of eternal life, which is by faith alone in Christ alone. PCC are sinfully placing the burden of change upon the lost sinner. Instead of telling the truth that Christ alone bore the full weight of our sins upon Calvary's cross. And may I say, Jesus does not forgive sin. You heard right. Jesus does not forgive our sin. He has already paid for everyone's sins with his precious blood. God is offering every guilty sinner eternal life as a free gift. And all you need to do is receive it by faith. Simply receive Christ's sacrifice on the cross as full payment for your sins. Believing that he was buried, but then bodily resurrected three days later for our justification. That is, the justification of our childlike faith in him. Faith is the only righteous thing that I can do. Also, you do not have to ask God to be saved. God is already offering you forgiveness of sins and eternal life as a free gift. All you need to do is take God at his word as recorded in the Holy Bible. God is freely offering every human being the gift of eternal life if you will just accept it by faith in his only begotten Son Jesus. God knows my heart in this matter that I do not hate any living soul. I love everyone with God's unconditional love. When I attended Campus Church at Pensacola Christian College in 2021 for several months, I was horribly mistreated by their senior pastor Jeff Redland. He was rude and unkind toward me. Not once did he ever tell me that God loves me even after I shared with him my broken life. Long time suffering from chronic neck pain and loneliness as a divorced man. Redland couldn't have cared less about me as a human being. He never offered to pray with me. He never expressed even the least bit of compassion or empathy. I learned very quickly that the pastor of Campus Church is a cold-hearted phony who woefully lacks God's love understanding or compassion for individual people. I was so disappointed. To make matters much worse, PCC leadership fully sanctions their incompetent pastor, which evidences how messed up PCC is today. I have read hundreds of negative complaints and reviews on social media against Pensacola Christian College. Many posted by their former students who claim to be victims. Many of them call PCC a religious cult. I would have to say that I fully agree with those assertions of PCC being an intolerant authoritarian cult. PCC has a bunch of rigid and strict rules but they woefully lack God's love toward people. That is not biblical Christianity. It is the type of abuse we hear about from cults like Mormonism. I cannot warn everyone enough to avoid PCC at all cost. And please do not even consider enrolling your son or daughter into their college. Unless you want them to feel like they're imprisoned in communist North Korea. Sadly. PCC's controlling strict atmosphere perfectly aligns with the popular BITE model which was developed by Dr. Stephen Hassan. The acronym BITE stands for behavior, information, thought and emotion. By controlling these four aspects of students' lives, PCC fits the BITE model of cult behavior. The Bible teaches that the letter of the law kills people, but the spirit gives them life. PCC is a prison house of rules without love. The fact that they refuse to allow me to attend campus church proves what I say. They hate me. They refuse to forgive me for criticizing them on social media. So why should I stop? PCC leaders woefully lack God's unconditional love and compassion for people. They are academic types, not church builders. So they lack compassion. My hero of the faith is Pastor Jack Hiles. In his helpful sermon titled Many Pastors Have Destroyed My Vineyard. Dr. Hiles had this to say about corrupt religious seminaries like Pensacola Christian College. Quote, the pastors have destroyed the churches and they've been trained by people that have never built churches. And they have no compassion. End quote. Dr. Hiles practically gives the address of PCC and Campus Church at 250 Brent Lane in Pensacola, Florida. I have been permanently banned in writing by the ungodly pastors at PCC since August 2, 2022 from attending Campus Church. It didn't matter to any of them that I sincerely apologized and tried to reconcile with PCC's leaders and church pastors. They cold-heartedly refused. Sadly their pastors are religious punks. Only a religious cult selectively cares about people. Only a cult forbids people from attending a church. Only a cult refuses to forgive people and give them a path of restoration. 
whereas all lives matter to God. Only some lives matter at Pensacola Christian College. I speak this to their utter shame and wickedness. By God's grace I have dedicated the rest of my life to preaching the gospel of free grace and faithfully exposing cults like PCC and the contemptible house of hypocritical religious elite snobs at campus church. I am committed to expose them for the dangerous cult that they are. People need to be warned. Like the Apostle Paul, I am set for the defense of the gospel. God wants us to speak up, but Satan wants us to shut up. I am speaking up. In this presentation I have focused primarily on the damnable false teaching of Lordship Salvation that is wickedly being preached today at PCC. Shame on all of them. Lordship Salvation is a perversion of the gospel. All that God requires to get to heaven is that you come to God as a guilty sinner and put your childlike trust in Jesus Christ. Receiving his sacrifice on the cross is full payment for your sins. Believing that he is risen from the dead. Nothing more is necessary to be saved. Remember, Jesus paid it all. You owe him nothing in return. The Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12 verse 1 that it is our reasonable service to present our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. But this is service and not salvation. Paul is speaking to Christians in this passage, not to unbelievers. PCC are caught between grace and works. They are guilty of mixing sanctification with justification. They are guilty of combining service with salvation. If you were to ask me why I think I am going to heaven when I die, I would simply answer that it is because of what Jesus has already done to pay for my sins through Calvary's cross. By the precious blood that he shed on the cross, Jesus raised up from the dead the third day. He ascended into heaven as my high priest. Jesus entered into the holy place and in the presence of God, the Father, he sprinkled his liquid blood upon the heavenly mercy seat. The price had finally been paid in full for the sins of mankind. Eternal life is a gift that is already paid for. All I had to do was accept it by faith. And I did at age 13. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. That is the only reason I am going to heaven. Because of what Jesus did to pay for my sins. I am trusting Christ alone and nothing that I could ever do of my own merit. I am a sinner and Jesus is the Savior. It is that simple. It saddens me that Pensacola Christian College has been deceived by Satan. Misled to follow a different plan of salvation which is rooted in neo-evangelicalism and not upon the true tried and tested inspired Holy Bible. Turning away from your sinning is works. Plain and simple. You cannot be saved by doing the works of the law. When I got saved at age 13 in 1980. The first thing I remember is that God's indwelling Holy Spirit started to convict me about the sins in my life. God went to work immediately trying to change me. But this had absolutely nothing to do with getting saved. I got saved by coming to God as an admitted sinner and I trusted Jesus as my personal savior. That is all. The issue of my sinning never came up at the time I was born again. I just heard the gospel and knew I wasn't saved. I knew in my soul that I was a guilty sinner. But no more. If someone had lied to me by saying that I needed to be willing to forsake my sinful ways to be saved. I would have refused getting saved. Thinking that I am not capable of doing such a thing. I would not have been willing to make such a serious commitment to be willing to clean up my life to turn over a new leaf and live a changed life from now on. Tragically this is the type of crap. I said crap. That is being preached in nearly all Bible colleges and churches today. This garbage is preached on Pacific Garden Mission's unshackled radio program. It is preached by nearly all 45,000 churches in the Apostate Southern Baptist Convention. A counterfeit gospel that requires turning away from your sinful activities to get to heaven is being preached from nearly every pulpit today. It is blasphemy against the word of God. I have received hundreds of ministry emails from confused and depressed religious people who have been lied to by Ray Comfort, Kirk Cameron, John MacArthur, Billy Graham, Franklin Graham, Joel Osteen, William Lane Craig, Chip Ingram, Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, Rick Warren, Max Lucado, Marty Heron, Gary Walton, Jeff Redlin, Timothy Zacharias, Chuck Phelps, Steve Pettit, Ken Ham, Beth Moore, William Grady, Keith Gomez, Sam Gipp, Sam Adams, Paul Washer, Adrian Rogers, Charles Stanley, Jimmy Swaggett, Pat Robertson, 
Todd Friel and other infidels who pervert the gospel. Falsely teaching lost sinners that God will not save them unless they first turn away from their sinning. That is not how God's simple plan of salvation works. Those wicked false prophets are corrupting the gospel in an attempt to force people to live a holy life. But in so doing they are misleading and giving those people a false hope in a counterfeit gospel, a perverse gospel that cannot produce the new birth, which is necessary to enter into God's kingdom. Jesus warned in John chapter 3 verse 3. Ye must be born again. Salvation is of the Lord. Our only part in getting saved is the beggar's part. Everything that is hard or difficult about salvation is God's part. Our only part is simply to believe the good news of Jesus Christ crucified buried and risen the third day. It is not what we do. That is. Works. That gets us to heaven. But rather. It is what Christ did for us. Which is grace. So trust what he did. Not what you do. And heaven will be yours. Dear listener. If you do not remember anything else from this presentation. Please remember that we must keep works and grace separate from each other. We must maintain separation between service and salvation. That is what the issue is all about. Calvinism is rooted in the false teaching by John Calvin that sanctification and justification are inseparable. That is. Calvin believed that if you are truly saved then you will live a sanctified life of holiness works and obedience to the Lord. In reality what he was doing is mixing works with grace. Which is a counterfeit plan of salvation. I quoted to you earlier what Pilgrim's Progress author John Bunyan said. That if we do not put a difference between justification wrought by the man Christ Jesus without. And sanctification wrought by the Spirit of Christ within. We do not divide the word of God aright. But contrarywise we corrupt the word of God and cast stumbling blocks before the people. John Bunyan is so right. He fully understood that grace and works must be kept completely separate or else we will corrupt the word of God and confuse people instead. Lordship salvation is the mixing of sanctification with justification. It is the combining of discipleship with sonship. Every believer is an adopted son of God according to John chapter 1 verses 12 and 13, and Romans chapter 8 verse 15. But Jesus is the only begotten, that is, biological, son of God. Believers are all adopted sons of God. John Bunyan was truly a free grace preacher. We need preachers like that in every generation. Men of God who do not mix works with grace. When a preacher tells someone to turn from their sins to get to heaven. He is preaching another gospel. He is corrupting God's simple plan of salvation. He is pulling on the same rope as the devil. Like Pastor Jeff Redlin wickedly does at PCC. These ungodly false prophets are arrogant. Filled with hubris disregarding right doctrine as if it were merely a trifle matter. There is nothing as important as the accuracy of God's plan of salvation. It is not okay to embellish. Change or add your own ideas to the gospel. Which is what PCC's campus church has wickedly done. Right doctrine matters. As I kindly mentioned. If you do not remember anything else from this presentation. Please remember that we must keep works and grace separate from each other. I think Pastor M. R. Dehan said it well on page 117 of his book titled Hebrews, which was published in 1959. Pastor Dehan writes, quote, There is a vast difference between coming to Jesus for salvation and coming after Jesus for service. Coming to Christ makes one a believer, while coming after Christ makes one a disciple. All believers are not disciples. To become a believer one accepts the invitation of the gospel. To be a disciple one obeys the challenge to a life of dedicated service and separation. Salvation comes through the sacrifice of Christ. Discipleship comes only by sacrifice of self and surrender to his call for devoted service. Salvation is free but discipleship involves paying the price of a separated walk. Salvation can be lost because it depends upon God's faithfulness, but discipleship can be lost because it depends upon our faithfulness. End quote. Bravo Pastor Dehan. That is exactly right. With all of the available helpful Bible study books authored by such great men of God as Harry Ironside Martin Dehan and Curtis Hudson. I am astonished that most pastors today are Bible ignoramuses who preach an accursed counterfeit plan of salvation of partial faith in Christ plus turning away from your sinful bad habits. Which is works. Not grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone. 
We need a revival in our Bible seminaries and churches today of what is and what is not the gospel. Turning away from your sinful bad habits is definitely not the gospel of free grace. It is worldly man-made reformation. Remember, in God's true plan of salvation Christ alone bore the full weight of the world's sins on Calvary's cross. But in the devil's counterfeit plan of salvation the burden of sin is placed upon the sinner's shoulders instead of Christ. The true gospel always points you to Christ. A false gospel always points to you. Turning away from sinful ways would be a work. Faith puts all of the merit where it belongs. On the object of our faith. Jesus and his work. Salvation is not doing your best. It is having Christ's best put to your account through receiving him by faith. PCC are wickedly pressuring lost sinners to first commit to turn away from their sinful bad habits if you want to go to heaven. But that is not God's simple plan of salvation. In God's true plan of salvation Christ died for the ungodly and you are not required to turn away from your sinful ways to receive God's free gift of eternal life. That is why God calls it a gift. Forgiveness of sins is free. You obtain that free gift by simply taking it through faith in Jesus Christ. Taking God at his word as recorded in the written Holy Bible. You just need to believe that Jesus did it all for you. That is a very different plan of salvation than what PCC's campus church is teaching. Which requires you to be willing to clean up your life of sin to be saved. I love you dear friend which is why I am telling you the truth. Beware of PCC's perversion of God's grace. Their gospel is not the same gospel which Jesus gave to the Apostle Paul. On Easter Sunday 2023 I visited the Fairfield Drive Baptist Church just down the street from where I live in Pensacola. The pastor's name is Josh Thompson, who teaches a Bible class at Pensacola Christian College. The church regularly invites singing groups from PCC to perform. When I visited their church I also saw recruitment literature for PCC on their track table by the church's front door. I had previously met Pastor Thompson at the Pensacola State Fair in 2022. He was a fool when I spoke with him, literally defending the devil's perversion of Lordship Salvation. I asked him directly if he believed in Lordship Salvation, to which he affirmed that he did. He quoted from Acts chapter 16 verse 31, which reads, quote, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. End quote. He insisted that the word Lord confirms that we must receive Jesus as our Lord to get to heaven. Pastor Josh Thompson then explained to me that there is justification, sanctification and glorification and that these things are a package deal that cannot be separated from each other. I felt sick. Because that is exactly what damnable false prophet Steve Pettit teaches at Bob Jones University to their thousands of students. Bob Jones College preaches hardcore lordship salvation. I speak this to their utter contemptible shame. Lordship salvation is a perversion of the gospel of grace. Josh Thompson is a false prophet. He teaches the exact opposite of John Bunyan. Whereas Pastor Bunyan rightly said we must keep justification separate from sanctification. Pastor Thompson and the cult at PCC falsely teach that we cannot separate them. It is a dangerous thing to say that justification cannot exist without a changed sanctified life. Do you see how the cult at PCC are corrupting God's grace? If you do not then you also need to get saved before it is too late. PCC does not get a free pass just because they are a big and popular religious college. God is no respecter of persons and neither am I. What PCC is preaching is another gospel. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 6. Quote, but though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been truly made manifest among you in all things. End quote. I humbly feel the same as Paul did. I do not intend to come across as being rude, offensive or unkind. God knows my heart. But telling the truth does offend people. Even professed Christians. Many of whom have succumbed to satanic deception. Jesus called the Apostle Peter Satan. For suggesting that he would fight to prevent Christ from being crucified. Jesus strongly rebuked Peter for his ignorance of the scripture. So we learn that even a child of God can be deceived by the devil if we are not careful. Shame on Pensacola Christian College for shunning me. For banning me from attending their campus church. For throwing me under the bus. For putting and locking me outside the gate with Jesus and abandoning me. All because I told the truth and they hate me for it. By the way. 
Jesus has always been outside the gate. We read in Galatians chapter 4 in verse 16, that the Apostle Paul told the truth and the churches of Galatia counted him as their enemy for it. Isn't that sad and tragic? That is hard to imagine. You'd think that they would have thanked Paul and loved him all the more for caring enough about them to tell the truth. But they counted him as their sworn enemy. Like myself. Paul was considered a troublemaker who went around finding weaknesses in preachers. That is exactly what Pastor Jeff Redland shamefully said he and the other incompetent pastors of PCC think about me and my website ministry. In July of 2021 Pastor Redland said that they think I find weaknesses in preachers. But they are wrong. The truth is that I expose wickedness in preachers. I find and expose wicked preachers like Jeff Redlin and Timothy Zacharias, who arrogantly preach and defend a counterfeit plan of salvation. Insisting that to be saved you must turn from your sinning. If you are carnal, then they accuse you of never having repented and say that you were never saved at all. That is Lordship salvation. Not the free gift of God which is received by faith alone. Since 2002 I have diligently labored day and night for the Lord Jesus Christ. Investing over 50,000 hours of labor into my several ministry websites and blogs by the grace of God. Investing over 50,000 hours of labor into my several websites and blogs for the Lord's sake and the Gospels. Jesus has always been outside the gate. Jesus said that the world hates him. And it truly does. Jesus is the way the truth and the life. The fastest way to be kicked out of Bible study and sent for therapy is to tell the truth. I have been persecuted shunned and ostracized by both the ungodly cults at Bob Jones University and Pensacola Christian College. All because I am taking a biblical stand against their utter wickedness. Thank you dear friend for listening to my lengthy presentation. God knows that I humbly just want to be a blessing to others for my dear Savior. I love you all with Christ's unconditional love whoever you may be. I made this presentation to warn everyone and speak the truth for Christ's sake. Right doctrine matters. To God alone be the glory. Great things he hath done and is doing. Thank you again for listening. And always remember dear friend. People